and welcome to the Fife Property Show this morning. Today's topic is going to be on um, renting to families, which is entitled Our Five Step Formula to the Perfect Buy to Let, which is found in the Fife Properties blog uh, online. And this morning, to join me and help discuss the topic, I have property manager Charlotte Caird. Morning. Morning. How morning. Are you? I'm grand. How are you? Yeah, yeah, good, good. So yeah, this morning's topic is um, renting to families. And like I say, it's like a five-step formula that's set out in the vlog for uh, buy to lets, which I think is a really good topic. Uh, probably give us a lot to discuss this morning. Um, yeah. Obviously, yourself being a, a mum and a young family and have rented mm -hmm. and have subsequently bought now. But you know, obviously, um, the things that you would look out for if you when you were renting and um, I think there, there's a lot of things to take into consideration when you're buying a buy to let if you're going to be targeting families. Wouldn't you agree? Definitely. Definitely. There's so much that goes into it, um, especially having like a young family. It's, de it's hard. It's hard choosing. Yeah, I think there's a lot of different factors, and I think we'll cover a lot of them this morning, yeah. whether that be location or, or actual um, physical um, parts of the property that you need to, to obviously facilitate an easier life with a young family. I think families are amongst the most stable tenants you could find. Um, and moving home is more complicated for single people. So I think it's um, it's a longer term tenancy you see a lot with uh, younger families and or families in general who who rent because they want to find somewhere where they could settle for a few years at, at least at a time, uh, close to good schools and and uh, and a, a nice residential area a lot of the time. Um, yeah, you don't want to be uprooting your kids all the time. So it's got to be it's got the property's got to be perfect for you, so you're not uprooting the kids all the time. Definitely. Yeah, think, yeah, of course. And I think as well, like family comes with a lot of belongings, furniture and uh, things like that. They need to be transported. And then, like I say, changing schools. Um, so, yeah, definitely um, long term tenants, which is good for from a buy to let perspective. It avoids void periods or longer void periods um, and gives you a, a better occupancy rate as well. Um, and it get, allows you, I think, and you know this, obviously, and I, I do as well with property management, but you've got long-term tenants, you build up um, quite a good relationship and long-term relationships. Yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah, I mean, you've, we've got a lot of families that we rent to that I'm sure you've built up relationships over the time mm -hmm. that you've been uh, managing the properties. Um, and also, yeah, sorry? So yeah, definitely, you do get to build that relationship because not only do you get to know them, you get to know the kids and you get to know how their life like works and everything it's nice to see nice to it's nice to manage properties that have like long-term families in them yeah yeah and, and property management i think it's good to be that person um mm -hmm. who resolves issues and 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 fixes things especially and, and keeps people happy especially family units and things as well yeah um, a couple of people saying good morning morning james how are morning. you um so yeah firstly i think probably the right location um if we're looking at the five-step formula for buy to let so the right location probably uh, families have multiple considerations when it comes to choosing where they live um, and location has a substantial impact on value rentability prof profitability uh, so the trick is to hit the right combination of schools transport and safety i think is one as well and um, obviously like main roads and busy roads things if you've got young kids that's things to think about yeah. uh, skills i think is right up there and you'll know that yourself obviously um, mm -hmm. you've got one of your your oldest is at school and your youngest yeah uh, just about to nursery yeah. so yeah yeah schools are a massive factor obviously we we we've not long bought but previously when we were renting um it was finding that balance of being close to the school that we wanted our child to go to yeah but far enough away if we were to move there was another school that was probably our second choice and they were all within a five ten minute walk of each other yeah. So that was a massive factor of us when I was personally right in was I needed to be somewhere that it had a decent school, I had a backup, I had childcare, um, I had nursery for my daughter. There's a whole host of things that come into it when you're planning on where you're going to stay as a family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, education is hugely important for families and with parents keen to give their children the very best start in life, it's if you're looking for a family rental property in Fife, um, the most popular schools and their catchment areas and which streets will give you the best rental returns and speeds to let. I mean, it is quite difficult for people at the moment finding rental properties that are in that area they want, close to the catchment area for the schools that they want. Um, mm -hmm. Think of that. Uh, Lisa's just given us a comment here about 
Uh, we need a four bedroom home. We are on the housing list, but we've been told not likely to get a suitable property anytime soon. And it's been two years already. Can't find one that is like what you're talking about earlier. Yeah, and it is really difficult at the moment. Um, you have a lot of families who are sitting on the waiting list for the social housing and things. And even in the private sector, it's difficult. So if you are a landlord and things and looking for buy to let investment, um, picking the right area and school catchment and things is, is, is key to finding tenants. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure Lisa, if, if that type of property come up in the right area with her schools and things, she would jump on that and she would be a long term tenant. So, and, yeah, that's, and that's so that's the key factors we're kind of discussing this morning for uh, for obtaining uh, long term family tenants, I suppose. Um, transport as well, of course. I mean, Charlotte, you live in Cooper, which is great because it's got buses, it's got the train link, um, mm -hmm. and things like that as well. And also, well, I think does your your kid gets to school with a bus, does he not? The bus, yeah. My son, my son. We actually moved out to Cooper, so but yeah. we we chose to. We live in Springfield just now, but we chose to move here. But we knew that they had. We've got a bus link through here. You know, yeah. you're five minute drive into Cooper. You know, if you need to be, I can get a taxi. Springfield actually does have a train line as well. Not much stops there, but there, there's an option. And also the school bus. Um, we needed somewhere that there was an active school bus. So in the mornings, Jack can just get on it, go to school, jump back off it, come back home. Yeah. Um, so transport links are huge. Yeah, of course. Yeah, definitely important if, you, if you've got kids and things as well. Mm -hmm. um, I think make sure that the bus stop or the station is nearby that goes to where they are going, obviously, whether it be school, mm -hmm. whether it be college, university or whatever. Yeah. Um, if you've got older kids at home um, and consider where parents are likely to commute to for work and things as well. I mean, not everybody drives, so um, train links and things for, mm -hmm. um, for obviously work and things as well. So I'll just like uh, Lisa's just commented back there about a discussion about yes, I would need to remain within the school. I just say it's kind of that, and then so, so obviously Lisa's needs means that she needs to be close, obviously for um, special conditions with her son and things as well. So there's a lot of factors mm -hmm. things that mm -hmm. people need to take into consideration for different families and different needs and things as well. Um, and then safety as well. I touched on safety at the start there, and safety I think obviously like when you've got young kids, you don't want something. Uh, some property that's placed right on a, a really busy main road where it could pose a safety risk for your children mm -hmm. um, and you want a nice quiet residential area where maybe low crime rates and things as well where you could feel comfortable raising a, raising your family and and be happy there and um, would you agree with that Shelley? yeah definitely obviously Much we've got now but yeah definitely when even going from whether it's buying or renting, mm -hmm. everything's still the same. It's still the, the five keys that you need to look for. And safety was a massive thing. So we're set off a main road, so we're okay. But I have so I have no issues with my, my son going out and playing at the park and crossing yeah. the roads on our street because I know that there's not much traffic on it. He knows to look both ways before he crosses. But it was a massive thing that I didn't want to be right on a main busy road yeah. for the fear of him maybe not looking and crossing and something happening. Yeah, I think, I mean, in general, I don't think most people would like to live on a main busy road anyway, just for traffic noise and, and that safety aspect as well. Um, if you've got children, is, I think it's really important. Um, and in, this, uh, in the vlog, it says that um, families and children of school age tend to avoid homes of main roads, look um, for streets with less traffic and plenty of other families. So obviously families where kids can play together um, so your tenants feel at home among their neighbours and confident of the safety of their children when they go outside. And I think that that is just what we discussed there. And I think it's really important and something to take into consideration uh, with buy to let. And then the next point is a uh, free time and fun, um, as well as having com comfortable homes. Families need to think about enjoying weekends and evenings, um, whether as a complete unit or a part. So things for adults to do, things for children to do, and things for the whole family to do, I think, nearby. Um, now, I think we're quite fortunate in Fife. I think there's so much to do if you've got a family. And, yeah. um, I mean, there's, there's uh, I mean, in the proximity of your, yourself, Charlotte, I mean, I think you've got like the Scottish deer farm, you've got- I've, um, got, a two minute, I've got the deer centre two minute walk from me. So yeah, Kearney, it's great. Is it Kearney Fruit Farm or is it Muddy Boots? Boots farm, yeah, that's just outside of Cooper, that's great. You've got Muddy, Muddy Boots, Boots as well, just in the road, you know? So we've got Muddy Boots, we've got Kearney, yeah. we've got Kent's Newer, we've got Craigton, we've got everything around us. Yeah, I think uh, we are quite fortunate to be in such a short commute to quite a lot of beautiful beaches, lots of nature walks, lots of parks and, and things like that um, for doing things with the kids. And 
And then obviously close to uh, towns like uh, Cooper, St Andrews, East Newk, and places that have got nice restaurants and places to eat and, and bars and things for adults to do as well. And then obviously these places, of course, you could take uh, families because a lot of them are family friendly and things. Um, but yeah, that's what it says from parks, nature, sports facilities, entertainment venues. Um, every parent and child will have their own interests. Do you know what I mean? So that everybody will be interested in different things, um, whether that be movies or outdoors or, or things like that. So it's yeah. always worth considering yeah. whether uh, it's accessed only by car or if you need to drive, if you need to walk, drive or take the train. Um, that's again obviously transport links, which is something that's really important. Um, and I think, um, no, sorry, what are you going to say? Right, even just like a play park where you, near you yeah, live, just like your park, yeah. be, like, after school, they come home, have their tea, can I go okay, my friends, yeah, it's just around the corner off your pop. Mm -hmm. It's little things like that, that that make the difference of you know where you're going to end up buying or selling or um, renting. Yeah, like I say, if you're, if you're in. A, a more built up area, it could be something that's just a small park at the end of the street where the, the kids could play. Uh, yeah. Think, yeah, definitely. Um, and I think as uh, as kids grow as well, obviously into teenagers and things, you, you've got all that to come. <laughs> you've got all that to come, Charlotte. But yeah, um, I think, yeah, as teenagers just start to, to feel kind of restricted and stranded when they're at that age, uh, obviously we've all been there, whereas like they, what kind of spread their wings, um, as they gain stronger sense of independence, They'll want to meet up with their friends um, and go explore reachable by, like, obviously, maybe they're on their bikes or whether it be by foot or do you know what I mean? So, uh, you need to think ahead as well, especially if you want to be in a property long term and be a long term tenant. You need mm -hmm. to think as the, and, and, and obviously, landlords and, and investors, things uh, putting properties on the market need to think, right, I'm targeting a, 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 my target audience as a family and I want them long term. So, they need to think, right, as a property I'm going to purchase suitable for them now as a young family and further down the line when their kids start to grow up and things start to change and all the surroundings and what the, the accessible uh, facilities um, obviously facilitate their living um, throughout those years. Because if not, once they get to that point, they're going to move on. Yeah, I mean, definitely. I mean, everybody moves on at some point in time, I suppose, but um, to try and get that longevity in a tenancy, you need to think ahead. Um, so yeah, I've got a couple of good mornings for people. Um, so, Jimmy, morning, Jimmy. Morning. Um, that's leaving, leaving off us saying good morning. Um, so, morning to you guys. Um, so, the, and that brings me to uh, the right accommodation. Um, and the right accommodation um, is obviously a key factor. Whether the size of family you wish to attract, there are some golden rules to follow. Um, and th this is the, the one thing, and it's, it's, it's first on the list in this, uh, this part of the, the vlog. Um, and it's storage space. And I always say one of the key things, obviously, doing viewings for so many years and rentals and knowing what uh, tenants look for, um, things like storage, off street parking, and things are right up there, uh, right up there at the top. And it's the first thing a storage space is vital. And like I said before, tenants who are young families or families in general have a lot of stuff, whether that be suitcase, suitcases, backpacks, sports equipment, tools, bikes, even the ironing board, the vacuum. Um, coat shoes and and even even doing Christmas decorations and things. Long term mm -hmm. tenants are need somewhere to put the Christmas decorations. They're not just there for six months or a year. We need to find somewhere to hide the Christmas presents. That <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. You need somewhere to hide the Christmas presents. Um, mm -hmm. Top yeah, tip. Uh, the, a good one is uh, the tumble dryer. <laughs> oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course, the tumble dryer. But you can only get so much in that. So. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, like uh, in terms of um, space and storage and, and things, how important is that to, to you, Charlotte, or how important do you find people coming to you that is? Because I, I find throughout the years that storage space is right sure. up there. Definitely. I mean, myself, my I have double wardrobes and every single built in double wardrobes in every single one of my rooms. Yeah. Um, and they are full. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely feel I've got a loft full as well. So there, it, families come with so much stuff, whether yeah. it's Kids' toys. Kids' toys is the biggest thing. Where am I going to store all the kids' toys? Yeah. Um, you know, if they are smaller size bedrooms, you need to, when you're viewing, you need to prepare ahead and think about, okay, the bed will be here, but where's everything else going to go? So they need to be ample size rooms as well, yeah. um, as well as having that option for storage as well. Yeah. Yeah, I think obviously built-in cupboard space, under their storage, um, mm -hmm. and there's there's a lot of um, opportunities if you're, if you're 
buying a property to buy to let and you're obviously at that renovation stage, look for opportunities where you could implement places where storage, like if it's under the stairs, could I make that into a cupboard? Um, or if it's in one of the bedrooms, can I make that into a built-in wardrobe? Um, As well, a shed, putting a shed in the garden yeah. because you kids' toys, yeah, you know, just, things I'm, like that. I'm, I mean, garages are ideal, they're not always available, mm -hmm. and older properties and things are not there, so obviously put one in is expensive, but if there's one there, Nine times out of ten, people don't put their cars in their garage, they use it as storage. Um, so if the garage is there to make sure it's watertight and it's obviously fit for purpose, it's, it's an amazing place for, uh, especially families, for bikes and uh, equipment, tools and things like we just discussed there as well. Um, so, and I think as well, loft space. Um, now, loft space isn't always maybe accessible, but if it is, and it could be made like that, um, again, um, nine times out of ten. People have got a lot of long. Especially like because that's where they belong. That's where they were when I was younger anyway. And yeah, definitely same here. Yeah, so I mean storage is key. Um now uh, a good sized garden with a lawn is essential, uh, as a haven for children to play and pets as well. I mean, children and pets I think um are important to have space for them. I think pets are really an important thing, and I think uh, we'll touch on it a bit more later. Um mm -hmm. Some landlords feel like a wee bit of a taboo and, and kind of discount pets, but I think um, pets are a big part of a lot of people's family life. Um, mm -hmm. They are the family. They are part yeah, of well, the family. They are. Yeah, of course, yeah. Um, so, yeah, a good-sized garden, as well as uh, family meal times and barbecues, uh, make sure any boundary walls and fences are secure and keep any uh, planting simple and low-maintenance. So, yeah, garden space uh, for families is really important. Um, I think if you're in a, a, a rental property, low maintenance is, is the best way forward. Um, it's less for the tenants to look after, it's less for you to try and make sure they are looking after. Um, and it just makes the, the process a lot simpler for everybody. But outside space for, for kids and things, and even for the adults as well. Yeah. And I, and I think a, a good thing. combination of uh, even with a little bit of grass for the kids and then a slabbed patio area for the adults, having that bit of difference for you know, everybody in the family makes a huge difference as well. Because re really, if I was to go for a property that was all slabbed at the back, I'd be like, it wouldn't be suitable for my kids because they fall over all the time. Yeah. And I'd not want bruised knees, cut, cut knees all the time. And <laughs> so, yeah, having a bit of grass area at the back, I think it's always a good shout too. Yeah, I mean, um, outside space, I think, and obviously in the last year or so has been even more important with so mm -hmm. many people being at home and working from home and uh, everybody being in lockdown. I mean, we've seen such an increase in the demand for two, three and four bedroom houses with mm -hmm. the extra space internally and externally because people were having to spend their lives in their garden and their houses. And that was their, I mean, apart from a short walk at some point uh, in time, we were all <laughs> obviously confined to our houses and, and your outside space was your sanctuary, very much so. Um, and that is why there's a shortage of two, three and four bedroom houses because- Yeah, definitely put things into perspective, that's for sure. Yeah, definitely. Uh, more good mornings here. Uh, Angela, morning, Angela. Morning, Angela. Um, so yeah, yeah, outside space is very important. Keep it low maintenance uh, and keep it so that it facilitates kids and adults, I think, so they could use it as just somewhere to relax, um, whether they are, they do still work for home or whether it's somewhere to relax when you all get home and enjoy the evening or the weekends. Um, yeah, definitely. Especially yeah. over the summer, you don't want to be locked inside a, a little flat if you've got a family. You want to have that room. You want to be able to let you open the back door and let the kids go out and play. Yeah, I think. I mean, there's there's some really nice flats out there, and and obviously people enjoy uh, living in flats and apartments and things. Oh, but yeah. it can be difficult for families. Um, we're not having outside space, and I think especially what the last year has taught us um, is uh, how important it is to be outside and. Mm -hmm. Uh, garden space is definitely the way for that. It touches in here as well, um, steer clear of the temptation to carve up bigger bedrooms into smaller spaces. Um, children tend to outgrow their bedrooms rather than shrink into them, so keep the original layout. By all means, add an extra bedroom if there's space in the loft for extension, obviously I say that utilising loft space, but check first that you have plans uh, are in line with demand. So I think that's important. I think I had a landlord recently who converted um, a two bedroom into a three bedroom and he did come to me and says, look, is this going to be, can I do this? Will it, will it be a wise decision to divvy this room up? And the room was so big and he'd done it and he'd done it really well. 
and created a really nice three bedroom house mm -hmm. uh, with three really good sized rooms. I think there was, there was two really good sized doubles and a third room, which was a, a, a double at a push. But usually when you have three bedrooms, it's like this tiny wee box room and, and, mm -hmm. um, and it's really quite difficult to utilize it other than a young child's bedroom. Uh, but he done it really well. And then mm -hmm. uh, obviously created a three bedroom property for a family, which was great. Um, but you need to be careful with that, I think. Um, obviously, watching costs uh, it can become costly when you're obviously changing rooms and changing, obviously, the floor plans or even building up into lofts and things. So, obviously, have a budget and, and make sure it's obviously managed properly and stick to it. Uh, or, or if it's really as necessary. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, don't be... Uh, personally, I wouldn't be closing off probably one of the larger rooms to make it a smaller room just to add an ensuite I would leave it and keep it the way it is you know as much as two bathrooms is fantastic for a family yeah because you need it <laughs> yeah you do you definitely I mean an extra bathroom is amazing when you've got a family and it does say here remember that more bedrooms mean more people so find a way to include at least an ensuite shower room to alleviate the morning rush I mean like you say obviously if you're going to have more bedrooms it's going to mean a bigger family so mm -hmm. if you're going to add on bedrooms and extra living space, you're going to need, and you've just got one bathroom and one toilet, that's going to cause problems, especially in the morning when everybody's trying to get ready. Been there when I was younger. Got <laughs> it having, just now. <laughs> yeah, well, there was, uh, I've got two sisters and a brother, and obviously there was a lot of us in the morning. So, and there was just one bathroom. So, yeah, if you could, if you could uh, compensate the extra rooms with extra bathrooms and toilets and things uh, to um, obviously facilitate the extra people, that is that is a good factor as well and um, and one thing that i know and obviously because we've already spoke about this charlotte as um in larger households uh, mainly family bathrooms be sure to retain a bathtub for the kids uh, and, I think, and I, I know that's an important thing um and obviously it, we've discussed this of my list. <laughs> yeah of course you've got young kids you don't just want a shower cubicle you really need a bathtub i mean you could get by a shower cubicle, but it makes life so much easier to have a bathtub for the kids to sit in. Mm -hmm. um, and and we, like I say, we did discuss this like personally, just in a, in a, a thing. Yeah. Because it's something that we get um, coming back to us quite a lot. Uh, and I do advise people, uh, landlords and things and investors when they're looking at properties. And I'm like, look, well, this is a three bedroom property here. You're going to be looking at obviously families. It's only got a shower cubicle. You're going to, need to take that out and put a and put a bath in. And there's one we're actually dealing with just now, um, the one in St Andrews, which we're actually going to be changing the shower to the bathtub for that very reason. And because mm -hmm. we had that conversation, and they were totally in agreement because the 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 owners are a family themselves. Um, so yeah, I mean, and it, it's it's all these things that you need to think about um, when preparing a property for a family. Yeah, they say a, a messy child is a happy child, but you've got to clean that mess up at some point, and a <laughs> shower just does not cut it. Yeah, um, yeah, definitely. And I think what I say is there, obviously, about um, requirements for families, and what I hear quite a lot, obviously, storage is up there, and parking as well. Uh, whether that be off-street parking or parking, which is obviously um, designated to the property, or, or even street parking, but is actually in front of the property is important. I mean, street parking is fine as long as you've got uh, I mean, there's so much cars on the road now, and streets are just jam packed. Um, mm -hmm. If you, as long as you've got access to some form of parking, uh, is obviously greatly useful. Most families have at least one car and will want somewhere to park. Although driveways and garages are ideal, they're less common in homes before like 1930s and things. So, mm -hmm. like I said, with garages and things, older properties won't have a garage uh, and not necessarily have a drive. Uh, and many families will uh, be okay with parking in a street. So look at uh, the overall parking situation on a street and whether permits and things are, are required or whether it's residents only, do you know what I mean, if it's a private residential place. Um, I think it might be worth as well if you've got a, a small front garden that's, you know, probably not going to be used. I never use my front garden, never. Yeah. So if I didn't have a driveway in a garage, I would probably just convert that into a driveway. It's worth, worth looking into as well if you possibly could convert like a front guard, a small front garden into a into a driveway. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you do you have quite a low maintenance front garden? Yeah, mine's is um, stoned and monoblocked. And do you, all the way do, you, up. do you just park on that? Well, you've got a drive. Yeah. You've got a drive at the side. So I've, I've, so I've got a three car. I've got a big double garage at the back, and then I've got a three car driveway 
to the side and then a two car driveway right in front of my car oh, my house. Brilliant. <laughs> so I can fit five cars in my driveway. Right, that's good. I mean obviously that's amazing parking. I mean that's not something yeah. you get quite a lot. Even I mean people are happy with just one off street parking yeah, space. One space would do. So yeah, so that kind of parking is amazing. Uh, mm -hmm. but I mean like I say families at least have one car but typically nowadays there'll be two cars. Mm -hmm. um, I mean there might not be any and then that's when the transport links and things come in. Uh, but I mean, on average, I'd imagine that there's at least one car uh, in a family. So parking is, yeah. is an important thing. And I do see it quite a lot. So there's another factor to take and to consider. Kids it's age. a struggle to kind of get your kids out of the car and I'm on a street sometimes can be challenging. Yeah. Um, and then as well, if you are parking on the street, you sometimes find if someone parks a bit too close, you can get into your boot, maybe get your pram out. Mm -hmm. So it can be a struggle. So parking is a huge thing, I think, for families. Yeah. Yeah, definitely up there, definitely up there. And uh, that's something that you need to take into consideration when purchasing a buy-to-let, if you're targeting public, obviously family mm -hmm. units is your, is your ideal tenant for the property. And then something that I touched on just um, uh, just before there is pets. And, and that's one of the next points is think about pets. Pets are such a big part of families, uh, most family units. Mm -hmm. uh, and they, like you say, hit it on the nail, they, they are part of the family. And people have yeah. such a like, strong connection with their with their dog or cat. Um, particularly, these are the, the main ones that are also um, ones that pose a problem for landlords because they don't want the property to be damaged. Or do you know what I mean? And I always say to to landlords and things when hey, we're having the initial conversations about who's your target audience, who would you like to have in the property? What? And uh, I do have some people that turn to say no pets, and I'm like, right, okay, well. I think you should reconsider that and 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 look at it on an individual basis as people come forward because if you just straight off say no pets without giving people a chance to demonstrate that they're a responsible pet owner that they um and how they look after their pet and i mean we have people bringing their pets into the office and things oh, like to meet us. yeah so um i think um as long as people are responsible pet owners i think it's down to the owner looking after them properly mm -hmm. whether it's, there's going to be damage and things happen in the property uh, people that maybe don't have so much interest and just leave their pet to do their, their own thing, that's when problems start to occur. And then that's mm -hmm. when things like obviously us inspecting the property and things to pick up on that. But I think to try and uh, establish that for the outset uh, before yeah. they even get into the property, then then you kind of uh, eliminate, well, not completely eliminate, but you reduce that, that risk. Um, and it says here, be open to pets. They are precious parts of life for most families and are usually problem free. You can alleviate any concerns with some well-chosen questions uh, and you'll find most families are happy with extra clauses in the tenancy agreement that sets out responsibility for damages by either their pet or, or visiting ones. And we, we do have obviously, there is obviously clauses in there about pets and, and yeah. we, when we do um, end checklists, I mean, I'll let you talk about end checklists and obviously cleaning requirements and things um, at the end of tenancy. Yeah, definitely. If you've if you've had a pet, then the tenancy, obviously, when the tenancy ends, we go in to do our, our sign-out checklist. Um, we also look for damage. We look for, you know, excess pet hair that is absolutely everywhere. It's, um, But before you leave, we, we send you an end of tenancy checklist that you have to complete. Um, and in it, if you have a pet, you have to get the property, like, freshly cleaned. Because, you know, you don't know what your pet's carrying, if they were to have any like fleas or anything, it's really common in dogs and cats. Yep. Um, you want to make sure the place is completely cleaned out so there's no evidence of a pet being there. Um, but the nine times out of ten, it's absolutely fine. Recently, I don't think I've seen any issues really with, with pets and properties. No, um, I mean, it does happen. I mean, I've seen it in the past where pets yeah. have caused damage in property and things. And I mean, you're never going to be able to, to on the wall. Yeah, you're never going to be able to eliminate that. But I think there's there's things, there's measures you could take to reduce that significantly. Uh, and like I say, the initial um, vetting process of uh, potential tenants and their pets and how they're looked after and things definitely does reduce that quite significantly. And what we've started doing, and I think a lot of other agents do it as well. But I mean, we've been doing it for a couple of years now, and and as take extra pet deposit at the start. Mm -hmm. And I think it just gives everybody peace of mind. It gives the landlord a wee bit of reassurance, like these people are willing to pay more money um, mm -hmm. and put it aside in, in the instance of any damage possibly occurring. Um, so it kind of demonstrates the tenants, obviously, responsibility to, mm -hmm. to make sure things are looked after. 
And I think you can gauge as well then if, if they're happy to go ahead and pay a pet deposit and if they're not happy to go pay it, you know, why are you not happy to pay a pet deposit, you know? But 9 out of 10, the pet deposit's great, I think. Yeah, and I mean, people are, I mean, we, we get two, three, four hundred pounds extra mm -hmm. on top um, for pet deposits and things. So, I mean, it's, it's not like it's just an extra hundred pounds or something. I mean, it's a substantial amount, whereas we come to the end and we think, like, the carpets do need professionally cleaned and they've not been done pre-tenancy exit, then once they do, we use that extra money and that's what we use to get all the carpets clean and things in. Uh, so, yeah, it just it provides that reassurance and things as well. Yeah. And um, obviously, it's in the clause that if they, you know, if they haven't cleaned it, we will use some of the deposit to make sure that, um, you know, your carpet, the carpets are in good, in good condition for going forward with the next tenant who potentially has a pet. But then as well, if there's an allergy, you know, somebody's been in there previously with a pet, and another mm -hmm. family's coming in, and maybe they do have like a dog, dog allergy, you want to make sure that everything's, yeah. everything's gone before they move in. Yeah, and and you know, obviously, um, between tenancies, you want to make sure that the property is clean and presentable and things for the next tenants coming in because if not yeah. then it's going to cause you a problem moving forward yeah it says here dogs are the dogs are the neediest and shouldn't be left along uh, left alone for long periods which i definitely agree with i mean i think yeah. you've got a dog um if they're crate trained perfect but they shouldn't be left for hours and hours on end i mean it's it's not good for the property it's not good for the pet um so that's something and i think responsible pet owners don't do that anyway um, so if, if families do have a, a dog, ask whether someone usually comes in during the day to look after them. And it's always worth finding out what kind of breed they are and gauge whether the property is suitable for their size. I mean, that's one of the initial questions when we're doing uh, vetting. Like, obviously, do you have a pet and what kind of pet is that? Um, if we're trying to rent a two-bedroom house or maybe a two-bedroom flat, or depending on what the property is, you need to see if the pet that they've got is going to be suitable for the, the property. You can't have some big great day in a one floor or five dogs in a in a small apartment. Yeah. So yeah, I mean that's and like I say, it's all about the initial betting process with that. I, as well. I, I also don't think it's just obviously cats and dogs. I think it's well they, they they much, yeah. Some but, people might have snakes and the ladder goes, Oh no, I can't have a snake, but the likelihood of that snake causing damage compared to a dog is slim to none yeah. you know they're a tank funnily enough uh, there's there's other ones that people maybe don't think of but people do have quite quite a lot of people do have them as like house rabbits and things they could mm -hmm. cause an immense amount of damage i'm absolutely uh, terrified of rabbits so you won't catch me near one <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> <laughs> that's a strange one i didn't know that know. okay um but yeah i mean I, I i've seen them cause quite a lot of damage uh, in a property so yeah definitely, i would definitely recommend considering pets um especially with family units but obviously consider it on an individual basis and take your agent's advice on whether they think it's going to work and pet deposits are always a great thing to add that extra security and, uh, and yeah. uh, that's where our referencing our referencing comes in as well because if they have been in a previous rental we can speak to their their old agents to yeah. find out you know was there damage caused by the pet if there was what was the damage if it was minimum great that's fine we know it's not going to be an issue yeah. So it's like all those things are factored into it. Yeah, pet, pets is a, a topic that you could really talk about for quite a while. Actually, I've got quite a lot of insight and stories over the years. But um, we'll move on and uh, look at family friendly fixtures. Uh, and I think that's internally in the property. Uh, fittings inside a family home should be a balance of durable and practical for a modern family life. And also it brings in the safety factor as well, because obviously um some mod con fittings and fixtures and that um maybe are not always child friendly mm -hmm. um child proof child proof catches on windows external doors and floor standing kitchen cabinets are all inexpensive way of providing welcome and peace of mind for parents and for showing you care and i think yeah putting in fixtures and fittings that maybe are not overly expensive but really practical look good have a modern feel um are all important to make people feel comfortable, make it feel like it is their home. And that, and that again, all adds to the longevity of tenancy as well. I mean, all these kind of things, if you, you walk into a property that's been finished to a nice standard with good fixtures and fittings, and they've thought about things that will um, facilitate an easier life for you and your kids, things like bathtubs and things, do you know what I mean? Things that then it's gonna make people think, I'm gonna be here a long time and I'm happy here. Um, would you not agree? 
Definitely. I think it's just really, really small things. Like, even, like, the radiators, having, like, the little radiator covers over them so the kids aren't going to run up and touch them when they're, they're boiling hot and hurt themselves. And it's the little things like that and making sure, um, you know, all the, the switches in the property are safe, everything like that. that obviously comes with your, your, your safety certificates, but yeah. just, like, the small little details are really what do count. Like, even having, like, a little, one of those little chains on the door, so if your kids can open the door, they can't open it through the chain at the top. Yeah. Big thing. Yeah, I think safety is obviously a big thing when you've got kids around. And there's just so much things to for a, for a parent to think about. So if uh, a landlord's providing a property that already um, provides a lot of those things and thought about things that's going to make your life easier, it, it really makes all the difference. Uh, I think we, well, we speak about storage and things in kitchen units. Uh, I mean, a kitchen needs plenty of cupboard space for foods and pots and pans and all the other gadgets that parents use for uh, snack for because snack is the word of covid <laughs> <laughs> yeah snack drawer a healthy snack drawer charlotte that'll be the, the that the cool box in the bottom of the fridge <laughs> oh, with well. in it. <laughs> no i know what you mean yeah of course definitely mm. but yeah like space yeah storage space especially in kitchens kitchens tend to be the hub of any home where Obviously, meals are made and people kind of congregate. And obviously, like I say, making sure there's enough uh, storage for pots and pans and crockery and, and food. So, yeah, and again, it all comes back to storage. Storage is such a key thing. Um, yeah. Well. And also, if, I mean, if you're providing white goods or appliances, um, making sure that they're suitable for for a family. I mean, I, I mean, fridge freezers, I mean, if you're going to provide um, a family home, you didn't really want just an undercounter fridge with a box freezer. No, uh, you want a, like the six foot half and half fridge yeah. freezer. Yeah, of course, at least. I mean, to I mean, if you've got a family, even just two adults, two kids, um, you're going to need a lot of freezer space and fridge space um, and cupboards and things as well. And then, I mean, and I think uh, speaking about appliances, uh, it brings us on to what used to be a luxury, but isn't it now? And a lot of people expect is a dishwasher. What a difference they make! No, yeah, <laughs> there's nothing worse than having to stand do dishes after a long day. Of yeah, dealing with it. working and, and and yeah, dishwashers. And I think obviously, for a long time, they were considered a bit of a luxury. But I mean, as we've as we've moved forward, dishwashers have become an expectation and part of everybody's life. Uh, everybody's mm -hmm. so busy uh, working mm -hmm. and, and doing school runs and th I mean, dishes are just the last thing you want to be standing doing at the end of the day. There's nothing worse than dishes. I hate dishes. Yeah, yeah. Just so much. <laughs> um, and appliances, obviously, again, like and washing machines as well. I mean, I mean, oh, if you're, the better, the better. yeah, yeah. I think obviously load capacity. If you're providing a washing machine, um, I think like six or seven kilograms is probably like the minimum you could. Seven. Yeah. There's yeah. a family of four seven because as well, if the kids have accidents, you know, and if you need to put like bedding and everything through the wash, it is better having. A, a, a bigger capacity like washing machine definitely and one that has a fast wash <laughs> yeah i mean do you feel that um i mean there's quite a lot of there's quite a lot of expensive appliances out there and things but mm -hmm. do you feel that it needs to generally always be the top of the range expensive or do you think the no. yeah the general no. mid-range um i like, think my washing machine I, that i have just now probably cost about 230 pounds i think it was it wasn't expensive and i've had it for about five years yeah. And it has never done me wrong. Um, and it gets used daily. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you do have, a, there is more expensive ones like Neff and AG and Bosch. Mm -hmm. uh, and they will give you years of service, but they do come, they do come about a premium. About the price, yeah. You don't need to put the highest of the highest range in a rental property or your own property. Um, as long as it's working and it's suitable, that's all that matters. I think, yeah. Uh, Pretty good ones that are like maybe Hot Point and Indesit and things, and yeah, they're all quite mid range, really reliable, good appliances. But then, as I say, not um, not all properties do provide appliances. I think it depends on the area and what where you are. Some people uh, do expect uh, appliances to be in there. I think a lot of the new, if you're fitting new kitchens now, obviously oven, hob extractor integrated yeah. as part of that now. Um, yeah. As opposed to I don't, I don't see many properties just now that don't have cooking facilities in them. Yeah. And I think that's just expectation now that it must be provided as a cooker. 
Yeah, and if we are doing a like if we're doing refurbs and that, it's always like kitchen oven, oven hob extractor. Yeah. Um yeah, and that that has an expectation. Um so that's something to think about. Like I say, it kind of comes hand in hand with new kitchens now that the oven goes in there. Um, but other appliances, the thing to be aware with appliances, obviously, if you're providing them as part of the let, you are responsible for their upkeep and their replacement if they break down. Um, so buying cheap isn't always the, the answer. If you're going to buy um, quite cheap appliances, then they're not going to last the test of time, especially uh, in a family unit. Wash machines are probably constantly on the go. Dishwashers mm -hmm. are probably on daily. So you want something that's tumble going to... Dryers. Oh, a tumble dryers, yeah, of course. Yeah. So you want There's something nothing. to stand the test of time. Yeah, you don't want to, like as well, having a space for a tumble dryer comes back to storage. If you're not provided yeah. one, where could you put one if you were a family? Because I do not know how people survive without a tumble dryer. It yeah. boggles my brain. It <laughs> boggles my head. I think we are aware that, I mean, obviously we've been, uh, we've been lucky this summer's been nice. I mean, so was last summer, I think, for a, a decent amount of time. But our weather, obviously... <laughs> For washing, I have, yeah, I don't have time to put my washing out. <laughs> There's <laughs> much of it; it just gets flung in the tumble dryer, and that's another yeah. thing. Obviously, like I say, I've got a young family, and I wouldn't use an outdoor space for my washing because, just like I said, I don't have time for it. So mm -hmm. everything just gets flung in. So storage for tumble dryers is a key. Yeah, and I think what's good, obviously, I mean, obviously, years ago, tumble dryers, you need to have the hose and 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 have it going outside with it through the wall or hang it out the window or out the, out the back door. But, um, as long as you've got a decent sized cupboard where a tumble dryer could go in it, you get the condensing ones now. Uh, and they're amazing because all you do is just empty the, the water out. Empty the water out. Yeah, and sure, sure kind of long winters, it's, it's a godsend for, for families and things for doing washing. So, yeah, yeah especially and, and that, kids have like school in the morning yeah. and you don't have their, their stuff ready, you're like, oh, it's fine, tumble dryer. Yeah. And like you say, again, it comes back to storage. Um, so always keep things like storage and that in, in, in mind when you're looking at buy to lets and thinking ahead of what's mm -hmm. going to be um, what's going to be useful to the the target from the, the, the target family that you're looking for. Yeah. Uh, and I think um, fixtures and fittings, and we've covered this in previous uh, shows as well, as like curtains and blinds. Even if the property is unfurnished, which generally they are, um, it's good to have maybe dress the windows to give that kind of finished look for when people are viewing. But I think it also makes it a lot easier as well. I think I've done a move in uh, at the beginning of the week there and the, the the landlord had decided to put those roller blinds and things in place. And the tenant had viewed it um, and then kind of, she was like, I kind of forgot what the, the property looked like. And then I, I was taking her around. She's like, well, there is a blind there and there is a curtain, there's curtains there. And she's like, that's mm -hmm. great. She's like, um, I was like, look, obviously you could change things to your taste, but she's like, no, that's brilliant because at least I've got window coverings. Yeah, well, that's that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And she she thought that was brilliant because she couldn't she couldn't remember whether they were in place or not, um, and that just gave her a wee bit of an extra alleviated a wee bit of stress at the beginning for her move because she thought, right, fine, I've got uh, window coverings on mm -hmm. windows. Yeah, um, especially like I say in kids' rooms, if you've got if you know which ones are going to be kids' rooms, having blinds or curtain up just. For them going in so they're like right, okay I can, the kids can just i can throw them in their bed tonight close the curtains and we can deal with the rest of it tomorrow yeah um, yeah definitely blinds and curtains and as yeah. well those new day and night blinds i think they're fantastic oh these like ones that kind of like yeah, the ones that go like this yeah you let the light through but they're still closed mm -hmm. I, do quite like them. And I think they're good for privacy and things as well i am um, i've seen them quite a lot and they're quite a good invention actually so yeah window window coverings whether it be curtains or blinds or do you know what i mean um they're not they're not necessarily required to be put in by a landlord but more and more i've seen landlords choose to do it um, it provides a better look it provides a, a starting point for tenants and i think also also you also have fixtures and fittings there to if they do want to replace them uh, with permission they can do so and there's already fittings or holes there for new fittings to go in Mm -hmm. um, you always run the risk of maybe tenants trying to put up curtains and blinds on their own and not knowing how to do it properly and not that can cause damage to the woodwork or the window mm -hmm. surrounding things which yeah. have seen happen in the past um, so yeah, yeah. I mean, it kind of eliminates the, the problem of having people put up their own blinds and curtains and causing damage yeah I think as well like even like decoration of the property don't be so scared to let them decorate so say having young kids like my daughter's room is pink and yeah. she would not have it any other way. Um, mm. 
So don't be too scared to let them decorate as well, make it their home. And because if they feel like they're at home, they will have a, a longer tendency and they'll want to stick about and stay. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely think that's the 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 way to go. And I think, I mean, to completely um, stop a tenant or try and stop a tenant from decorating and making it a home, you're, you're kind of, you're, you're setting up the tendency to stop yeah. to feel earlier than what it should be because they're never going to feel like it's their own home if they can't make it their own home. Yeah. I think as long as it's managed properly and people who want to change decor and make it their home have that good relationship, whether it be with the landlord director, whether it be with us as an agent and say, this is what I want to do, I'm going to have a painter come in and do it, or do you have a painter that could come in and do it? And Do you know what I mean? And it's done properly and professionally. I mean, mm-hmm. there's nothing worse. I mean, like like you say pink rooms for girls and blue for boys but there's nothing worse than blue or pink paint all over the bright light switches or over the nice newly white painted skittons and door or on the floor or on the floor <laughs> new carpets, yeah yeah on the floor definitely and that's what brings me to the next thing is obviously flooring in the property mm-hmm. and i think obviously the easiest thing um is timber laminate or wooden floors and things they're so easy kept um and easy easy to clean really low maintenance of course obviously in certain areas of the property that's not ideal to have and a lot of people do still like carpets which is fine i mean you, i mean i have seen people with laminate and things in bedrooms but a lot of people like a nice not for me yeah not for yeah. me there's nothing worse than getting at your bed and put your feet on cold laminate <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i mean flooring and things so yeah fixtures and fittings uh, are definitely um definitely very important um, especially in busy households, I think flooring needs to be uh, considered. I think in hallways, um, laminate or timber flooring things quite good. Um, and well just now you're getting that UPVC click floor laminate, which right. is fantastic. See for bread, for bathrooms and kitchens, it's mm-hmm. fantastic. Um, completely you... waterproof, stainproof, everything. Yeah, did you you sure you, you were telling me it was one? Or was it your own house or was it? I got it in my bathroom. Oh, mm-hmm. good. I couldn't remember if it was. Uh, one of your properties or your own. That you'd no, it was my to. own. Um, so yeah, and that's brilliant because you, ca- you can't you can't put timber laminate and things in bathrooms and that because they'll just get soaked <laughs> and they, they lift. Uh, but that UPVC click and stuff would be amazing in a bathroom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but I think, yeah. I, mean, okay. I was going to say, God forbid, have a carpet in your bathroom. <laughs> which, uh, <laughs> it used to be it used to be a common thing years and years ago but uh, and you'd be surprised the many properties that i go into the first time and, and uh, whether it be older properties that are going up for sale and things but and there's carpets in the bathroom uh, <sighs> yeah i mean obviously a lot of a lot of younger people now thank god yeah never but i mean it used to be a thing it used, it used to be, to be a thing. yeah personally i would say like hardwood flooring downstairs maybe carpets up the stairs in the bedrooms so mm-hmm. i would say yeah, and the thing is, with with with, um, with having laminate and hardwood floors or whatever down, you get you could get big rugs or and runner rugs up halls and things to make it feel comfortable. Mm-hmm. But ultimately, the actual flooring itself um, is easily cleaned and and yeah. and durable. I think, especially if you've got high amounts of traffic, kids running in, shoes, things like that, um, and and these uh, and like these family spaces, um, whether it be the lounge or the hall, as you come into the property as well. So, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think it's definitely all about striking the balance between um, finding the right location, um, finding the right accommodation, whether that be um, a two, a three, a four bed, or like I say, with the um, with the landlord I re- re- referenced to earlier that had a two bed and made it a three bed, but still obviously kept room size is good. Mm-hmm. Um, and all this, all the specifications in the property, I think, is important. Um, storage. Um, kitchen units and um, and all these different aspects and external as well like we say parking and garden spaces and things as garden. well do you agree yeah definitely it really just comes down to think before you buy in a way if you are an investor or a landlord um, just now everyone that's well most people that I see phoning in are looking for three bedroom property at least a three bedroom property because there's just nothing available just now and when there is it's going like that. Yeah. So, um, and think about what you would want if it was going to be your rental. You know, think about what, you know, would you want to live in somewhere that had like, you know, not nice finishings and the floor was coming up and stuff like that. Just make it homely. 
Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think, like you say, make it home, and allow them to make it their home as well. Yeah, um, definitely. I think at the moment, location is quite an important thing. I mean, um, there's there's such a high demand still in, in Fife, and, and like you say, we're, we're low supply, and, and we do have things in the pipeline trying to get things on the market. Location is really key, I think, whether it be for schools or whether it be for commuting, um, whether that be on buses and trains, or, or even just to be close to places like St Andrews, obviously, people are this, coming around the time of year for people, students and things coming up. Yeah. And, and rental prices in St Andrews are, are really high, so yeah. uh, they're looking at areas out with that. Um, and, and even families and things coming up uh, from other areas who are coming here to either work or study and things, uh, they're looking for areas that are um, obviously in a, in, a, in a good area, which is residential, transport links and things. So, I mean, there's th these five, the five point formula that's in, um, a rent and families blog, which is on the website and which we've just kind of picked from today and, and, and ran through. These are all the main points that you need to think about um, mm -hmm. if you're a if you're a buy to let landlord or investor and looking for property and targeting yeah, exactly. particularly families. I think Glenrothes as well. Out of nowhere, recently, yeah. everybody wants Glenrothes and everyone wants a three bedroom property with a back garden in Glenrothes. Yeah, well, I mean, our two and three bedroom houses in Glenrothes are just. It's crazy, and people that come to view them um, are so, like, obviously desperate. They're like, because we've, we've, we've put forward for so many properties, and sometimes they're not even getting through the door to look at them, and they're gone. Uh, and I could totally sympathise with that. So, uh, but yeah, Glen Office is uh, very much up and coming, uh, and very popular at the moment for families. I think uh, it's quite well situated in terms of location. It's it's quite central. Yeah, it's quite central in Fife. It's got so much facilities there on the doorstep. Um, whether that be leisure activities, transport activities, good shopping, um, schools or transport to schools. Um, yeah, definitely, I think so. Yeah, Glen Office is one. Um, but I think obviously uh, these kind of areas do um, facilitate quite a, a good family, um, obviously, area. It's just there's not enough at the moment. So if you are a buy-to-let landlord or an investor, Look at these areas. Yeah, look at these areas. Speak to us, definitely. I mean, speak to myself, speak to Charlotte. Um, obviously, we could um, give you advice on what's what's good to buy in the area, um, what kind of properties will appeal to family units if that's what you're looking for uh, or looking to target, definitely. Yeah. So any, any more final thoughts today, Charlotte? Just like you say, strike the right balance. Yeah. You know, weigh up your options of if it's going to work for you as a landlord as well and then if you do take on the project and make sure it's right for you what's going to be right for your tenants because in the, the day moving with a family is one of the hardest things to do yeah. um and as well it's not just you it's your kids and i think when you bring the kids into it that's when it makes a big difference so yeah. um it has to be their home and you can't keep up on rooting them because you're not happy in the property so um yeah definitely make sure it's right for a family yeah great yeah and no, i mean that's been good this morning and i think it's, it's good to speak to yourself obviously get an insight as somebody who's actually at the moment has rent has rented the property and now mm -hmm. obviously you own your property but you've been through that experience you've got a young family so it's good to get some insights for you yeah. uh, and i think anybody that's obviously looking to uh, purchase a buy to let and uh, there's a lot of aspects in there whether it be pets or whether it be a uh, location if people are not sure uh, how to approach that or where is the best area and what is the best property and should I consider pets? Definitely ask us uh, any questions um, and come to us direct and we'll be happy to help. Yeah, definitely. Okay, right, well, that's been great, Charlotte. And we, we could we could pick out certain bits of that and talk all day, but um, like I say, uh, we're open to discuss with anybody who wants to further anyway. So thanks very much for joining me this morning. Thank you very much for having me. Everybody for their comments and their input and uh, we'll see you later, okay? Bye, bye. Right, bye.